Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 12, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. And Brad did some malware analysis again, and uh, he looked at the latest example of TA551 or Shadhack, uh, this particular malware group. Uh, he talked about before, and it's your typical malicious email. In this case, the attachment arrived as a password protected zip file. Now, once extracted, you got your standard word macros that then dropped additional malware, including the bizarre loader. Now, what we see more and more lately, of course, is Cobalt Strike Next. And uh, Brad has in the write-up uh, the traffic that actually Cobalt Strike uh, generated. That's probably the most interesting part here because you see this in so many uh, different uh, malware samples uh, these days. The traffic captures are again available for download. So if you would like to play with them yourself, you may do so. Just uh, look at Pratt's diary. But well, it's not just Windows users that uh, click on things. Apple users aren't immune either. And Sentinel Labs uh, looked at uh, ad load. Uh, Mac OS malware family that has been around since 2019 and Sentinel Labs looked at 150 unique samples just this year. What's sort of interesting here and pointed out by Sentinel Labs is that Apple's X-Protect, which is supposed to protect you from malware like that, apparently isn't that terribly effective. Well, X-Protect is really very much a signature dependent and typically easily evaded. According to the article, there are about 11 different signatures in X-Protect for different ad load uh, versions, but uh, ad load keeps mutating and specifically evading uh, these signatures that Apple has been adding. But with all the variability of these attacks, uh, AdLoad apparently still uses these fake flash download pop-ups in order to trick users into installing the malware. And apparently Android users like to click on things too, in particular if they're advertised by their Facebook friends. Symperium has an article about what they're calling the flight trap malware. It is downloadable via the Google Play Store, but apparently one mode how it's spreading is that it's compromising infected victims Facebook accounts and then using these Facebook accounts to advertise itself to the victim's friends. This is of course a little bit more likely that a user will click on the link that's being sent by a longtime Facebook friend. Let me have a couple of uh, Black Hat cleanup stories, stories that I didn't get to cover uh, last week uh, when they sort of were first announced. Uh, first of all, weaknesses in 5G networks. 5G, of course, comes with a number of additional security and privacy protections that we didn't have back in LTE and earlier network technologies. Just uh, like with any technology, the problem, however, is that you can't switch from uh, LTE to 5G in one step. You need to run both technologies uh, in parallel uh, to allow phones to use either depending on the network quality of course and the phone and the tower's uh, firmware status and such. So the result is it's downgradable and with that a lot of these special 5G features can be turned off and you're back in the good old 4G or even I guess down to 3G and uh, the calls are eavesdroppable by tools like Stingray. And Shir Tamari from Wiz.com uh, did uh, publish a paper at Black Hat and also now a blog post outlining a weakness in some DNS uh, cloud providers. So these are providers like, for example, AWS's Route 53. And the problem here was that, well, they do use a large number of DNS servers, but do not necessarily 
prevent you from registering a domain name or a zone using an identical name. So that way you can essentially impersonate one of AWS's and the same weakness also affected other uh, of these uh, cloud-based DNS platforms and then redirect queries that were supposed to go to uh, these authoritative name servers uh, to your own name server. Pretty interesting uh, weakness, it has been fixed now and uh, as part of the blog, they also included a link where you can test if your own domain is potentially vulnerable. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. There's a chance that there will not be a podcast on Friday. I will be traveling to an area with a little bit iffy internet connectivity. So uh, if you don't hear me on Friday, maybe Monday or even Tuesday till I publish the next uh, podcast. Thanks and talk to you again, well, tomorrow or Monday, Tuesday.